Knives as weapons. Not my cup of tea, but definitely Ernest Emerson's cup of tea. Check out his Blade HQ Meet Your Maker interview. He's a well-spoken man, and for someone who, you know, if you are into knives as weapons, then he's probably a bit of a folk hero. And I can see why he's well-spoken. And you know what? Regardless of, you know, my opinion on knives as weapons, he does word his very well, and he has clearly thought very, very hard about that philosophy. He says he designs knives to make better weapons. He explicitly says that. So you can sort of take with a grain of salt that most of his designs have that philosophy too, unless explicitly stated. So I think he makes a couple of EDC knives that he actually says are EDC knives on his website, but most of these knives are generally sort of tool slash weapons. A bit like in Zoolander, there's model slash actors. These knives are weapons slash tools rather than tool slash weapons, or just tools, which is how I like to think of knives. This is the Kershaw um, Emerson CQC6, and it's kind of the most, um, of when you look at the Kershaw Emerson line, which is a line that came out about 2013, where Kershaw made Emerson designs with um, a lower quality steel, pretty much. Um, lower quality steel in the blade and in the liners, and that's pretty much it. Um, or lower quality metal, I guess, whatever. Um, that, when you look through the range, there's a lot of really kind of weird and wonderful ones by now. I think Ernie's used that, that opportunity as a way of getting all sorts of peculiar ideas out of his noggin without having to, to use them, you know, use his Emerson materials and Emerson shop to make them. So, it's probably served him very well for flexing his creative muscles. Anyway, this is the one that's kind of the most basic um, Emerson, pure Emerson design. It actually looks a lot like the um, Emerson CQC6, which um, just has the different um, edge geometry and uh, blade shape a little bit. But in terms of the handle, in terms of the action, in terms of the features, very, very similar. I was going to go out and just drop $275 on an Emerson knife. In Australia, Emerson knives cost a lot of money especially given the materials. Then I looked at the uh, Zero Tolerance Emerson, uh, which uh, was even more money with uh, a slightly better blade material, which was, I think, Elma Elmax at the time, the one I was looking at. And then I thought, you know what? None of those features that are Emerson are ones I even know, uh, I'm gonna even have any idea if I like or not. So I thought I'll pick up one of these Kershaw ones. I'll pick up the closest Kershaw to a real Emerson and I'll see how I feel about it. So I'm, a, I'm completely aware that this wouldn't have the level of um, fit and finish or um, you know, heart in it and all that sort of business that a real Emerson or a zero tolerance Emerson would have. However, I think as an example of what basic features you get with an Emerson knife, it's probably a really good way to start. So let's just go over the facts and then we'll go over the things I like and the things I don't like about this Kershaw Emerson CQC 6K. So the blade you get a 3.25 uh, inch blade, which is, you know, that's getting towards larger uh, everyday carry for me. Uh, I like to keep it about three, but that's fine. You know, it's still very much a, a carryable and usable blade, nothing too enormous, but also getting that little bit of extra length on it for use as, you know, combat purposes, whatever. Uh, the blade is made of 8CR13, I think, no, 14. That one little extra bit of MOV in the steel. So whatever that does for it, uh, makes it slightly more uh, MOV-ish, who knows. Um, it's um, satin and then stonewashed on the edge, which is a cool little feature, cool they took the time to, to do that. I'm not sure if um, any of his actual knives do that, but very cool little idea, very Kershaw. Kershaw loves that sort of stuff. Uh, it's got a thumb disc opener and also a wave opener, which I'll demonstrate for you later. Stainless steel on one side, uh, which incorporates the frame lock feature and the pocket clip, which is revoiceable. And then you've got another stainless steel liner, which is still rather thick. It's probably about two thirds the thickness of the, of the frame. And then just a slab of G10 for grip. Going down, you've got a handle length that is, um, where are we? Uh, 4.5 inches. Uh, and the overall length being about, by my calculations, 7.75 inches long, getting towards about 19 centimeters or so long. So it's not a small knife, not a huge knife, a little bit under a paramilitary too. But um, yeah, certainly bigger than well, as well my recent review of the Lion Steel uh, SR1A. So a little bit, a little bit sh uh, larger than that. Uh, weight, 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 five ounces. So as you can probably guess, stainless steel frame lock adds some weight to a blade, and it does feel hefty enough in your hand. Five ounces to me isn't ridiculous for, for an everyday carry knife. Some people stick to, you know, the th rule of three, you know, three inches, three ounces, all that sort of stuff. I'm a little bit more open if something's really, really good. 
Um, it's made in China. Uh, G10 handle style, scale, 410 stainless steel liners, um, frame lock, what else? Thumb disc, wave opener. Yeah, that's about all. I've been through everything. I'm just going off my little cheat sheet here, sorry. So, what do I like about the knife? Well, I like the blade shape. I think it's a pretty cool blade shape. It's quite useful. It's got lots of flat here for, for you know, uh, shave cuts, and you've got some belly here for, for using on, um, you know, food and just having a nice little bit of rolling action, or, you know, as I always say, you can dipping that into something and just using it as a bit of an oodly knife, whatever, you know. It's good to have a few different angles and shapes on your blade. Um, the blade thickness is just over three uh, millimeters, so you look next to the line still. It's a little bit thinner than that, and of course it tapers down quite thinly as well, so they have saved some space and some size on that. So I'm quite happy with the blade shape. The, um, I'm also very happy with the, the grip. This is a really, really comfortable grip, and you can tell it's from someone who makes knives for holding while doing very vigorous things with them. So that is certainly not going anywhere. I use the analogy of my line steel. If I, hung, if I put this into a vise, which would be a horrible thing to do to a knife, say upright, and hung my weight down, I would have a greater chance of holding onto this one than many other knives. That really uh, exaggerated finger uh, catcher there, finger choil, um, really does the trick. The G10's grippy enough, it's a bit thicker in hand than the handle, so enough to hold on to there. And um, yeah, just generally lots of nice jimping where you need it. Um, the wave gives you a good sort of thumb ramp when you're cutting. Can't really choke up on it at all, but there's not a huge amount of distance, only about a finger width between where your knuckle ends and the blade begins, so control is not an issue either. So overall, I think it's a fairly ergonomically designed knife. I'm quite happy with it. I'm happy with G10 as the handle material. The appearance, you know what? I can't. I'm, I kind of like. I kind of like how these knives look. I wasn't sure if I would like them at all when I got when I ordered one, but I kind of like how it looks overall. I also like just nice. He's a nice. You know, he's a man. A man of the people. Just using flathead screwdrivers um, and Phillips head screwdrivers to open and service the knife, which is very very cool. You can take this thumb disc off as well with a, a screwdriver there. So very very cool. And that way, I will leave you just with the uh, wave opening feature to open the knife. Not too bad at all. So what don't I like about the knife? I don't like the clip. The clip leaves um, too much out in my opinion, but uh, you know, I, I can balance that with it needs to have a bit of grab for the wave feature to work, which if you like the wave feature um, because you use your knife you know, perhaps as a weapon or as a defense you know, tool, if you're a policeman in America or something perhaps where they um, encourage you to you know, carry a sidearm and that sort of thing uh, rather than just your primary uh, firearm weapon, if you would have chosen a knife like this, I think it would do you quite well. As long as your pants don't zip up, because that'd be probably a bit defeating. Uh, but anyway, um, I'll just demonstrate the wave now, I'll run some uh, footage in of me using it. Uh, it's a little bit finicky, to be honest. I'm probably just new to it. You need to angle it back a certain way. It's a bit like when um, you take a firearm out of a secure-ish holster, you need to sort of pull and pull back a little bit, like a, a pistol. It's a little bit like that, so very similar. And I think people who uh, are down with that muscle memory will adapt to this one very, very quickly. So. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the wave opener though. I think it adds a little bit of a, a, hooky, a sticking point uh, on the knife with me. So say if I have this in my pocket, um, it's just something for my keys to get caught on. And um, I was playing around with this before and my keys were just sort of thoughtlessly dumped in the bottom of my pocket and it actually snared onto my um, aircraft cable key loop and actually flew, threw my keys out of my pocket when I, when I vigorously tried to wave the knife out. So, a little bit to get used to, I think. So, I'm not going to say it's a terrible thing. It's a really good idea for this sort of purpose of the knife, but I don't personally like it myself. The thumb disc, it really on the fence with that. It's a very definite way of opening a knife. You really can't muck it up, um, especially when you're thinking with gloves or in quick situations. Um, it's, you know, quite intuitive. You just push your thumb against it keep rolling, you can do it with your eyes shut really easily. That's always an interesting thing, close your eyes and open and close your knives and handle your knives. Um, obviously be careful of the blade, don't cut your fingers off, but try and do your stuff that you do when you watch the knife with your eyes shut and you sort of, you, get, you really start thinking about what feels good and what doesn't feel good. So I, I'm okay with that, it's just when you say, and you know, I'm sure Ennis, Emerson didn't design this knife to cut cheese. When you cut cheese with this knife, it gets hung up on this and cheese gets stuck underneath there. So um, <laughs> if I ever met Ernest Emerson himself, I think he would just roundhouse kick me if I said, hey Ernie, your, your knife's not too good at um, um, cutting cheese, that is. So I, I, I wonder if you could perhaps uh, uh, 
remove that thumb disc so I can cut my, I think I'd get about three quarters of the way through that and I would just get roundhouse kicked right in the cock, so, and quite rightly too, because it's not what the knife is for, but I do like to be able to use my everyday carry knives for every purpose that I come across. So, yeah, the clip and some of the more combat focused features are probably not my cup of tea. However, I can't really criticize this knife too much. It costs uh, $60 in Australia and I think a fair bit less in America. Uh, let's see what Knife Center are selling for. Knife Center is for selling this for $34. So that's um, that's Rat 1 territory. Um, the steel, as long as you're happy to sharpen probably 20% more than for say VG10, yeah, you probably won't have a problem at all with that. And overall, it's a fairly durable and fairly well-made knife. Not super quick, not, not a flick open pocket knife. It's a different intention behind it than for all of us just pure EDC knife geeks. It's It's got more got more to prove and more to do, which is, you know, it's fair enough. Um, there are no physical flaws with the knife. There's nothing that I can knock or say that is badly designed. It's just the design isn't my cup of tea. So that's about all I can all I can go with there. The only thing I just flat out don't like is this this hump here. I wish they. It's a bit like how the Delica, how you can see that tang. This is kind of the opposite problem, but still the same kind of problem. I just wish you'd smooth that over. But then again, I'm sure if I went up to Ernie and said, "Hey, there's something I find slightly ugly about your incredibly practical uh, fighting knife, Ernie. It's it's just that you know that slight hump that that happens when you close that. I think again, I'd get a swift roundhouse kick right to the face, and probably fairly enough. So there you have it. So I'll just do a few. Um, I'll just do a few pocket carry shots and a few more wave opening shots and all that sort of business. If there's any other questions you have about the knife, just ask me in the comments. I think I've gone over about everything I like and dislike and all the basic specs. So, uh, is it too heavy for you? Is it too combat focused for you? I think the ideal person this knife would be for is the person that carries, uh, and I just don't because I, I don't know, I just I don't have that much pocket. But for the person who carries an EDC knife, like so they're light, you know, all purpose knife and a second defensive knife. So probably not Australia, but if you're in America and you can carry knife for defense, which, you know, good, good for you, that's awesome. This might be a good one to carry for defense. This or, you know, I mean, you might go for something a bit bigger, but if you're after something that can, or, you know, maybe an EDC that you think is about 50-50 for carry and defense. But with me, my knife is 100% for a tool, 0% for defense, so lots of the stuff just doesn't sell to me. All right. Well, thanks for watching again. And I'll uh, see you in my next video. I'm trying to keep the videos cranking out pretty well lately. So uh, uh, do hit like as well and hit subscribe and all that sort of business because I'm getting towards a thousand now and it's, you know, it's, it's good for the old ego to, to have people watch and enjoy my videos. So thanks so much. I'll see you later.